Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where today I'll be playing Aracore, which is the newest installment of Multiman Publishing's Battalion Combat series. It's meant to be sort of an entree into the series, I believe. It has bigger counters, for example. It has only one map. It has a manageable amount of counters, I think. And it just sort of doesn't have very many special rules, so you can only so you only have to really get into the main rule book without having to worry about any more fiddly bits. And yeah, overall it's pretty it's a pretty awesome installment, I think, for the series. And I've been wanting to get this onto the table and record it for a while. But of course, I always want to default to doing the full campaign, and that's just such a commitment. So today I'll just be doing a small scenario, it's a two-turn scenario, that only uses the southern half of the map. So let me read the introduction to this um, edition of the BCS uh, series, the Battalion Combat series. I guess that's like saying ATM machine, but you know what I mean. So let me read the introduction to Aracor and then the introduction to this scenario for you. So Aracor is about the Battle for Lorraine in 1944 in France. And it's a BCS game of the defense of the 3rd U.S. Army's pincers at the apex of the encirclement of Nancy in its drive across Lorraine, France, in September 1944. The Germans are attempting to thwart this advance and throw back the Allies, trying to make it to the German border. The resulting battles in and around our Corps are considered classics of armored warfare and used as a case study in the U.S. Armor School to this day. So I'm doing the third scenario, the Battle of Lunaville, but I'm going to read the background information for the first scenario because I think that gives some good context for this battle. So following Patton's encirclement of Nancy east of the Moselle River, the 4th Armored Division and 2nd Cavalry Group rested in the area of Aracor and Lunaville to await infantry divisions cleaning up the pocket. It was at this point that Germany's own armor expert, Hasso von Monteufel, was to launch a counteroffensive to destroy the American forces. The fighting that ensued became one of the fabled tank battles in history, pitting veteran and green tank crews against each other in the fields of France. And specifically, the Lunaville battle was um, a subset of the battle for Aracor, and so the scenario introduction for that one reads... While the fighting around Aracor receives a lot of press, the initial attack by the Panzer Brigades was conducted against the strategic commune of Lunaville that led directly to Nancy. The attack met stubborn resistance, and fog of war left German commanders unsure if they had actually captured Lunaville at the end of the first day. This caused the Panzer Brigades to be sallied away to other objectives the following day. This scenario starts with the historic attack, with the chance that the main Panzer forces are withdrawn and leaving the capture of the commune in question until the end. And you see that the only special rule in the scenario is that at the end of the scenario, you roll a die to see if each of the Panzer Brigades remain on the map. And that could affect whether the Germans have control over the victory point hex, which is Lunaville itself. So now let me introduce you to the main cast of characters, what the board state is at the start of the scenario, and kind of what's going to be happening in the two turns of this scenario. So on the American side, we have elements of the 4th Armor Division. So out here on this hill, 341, north and west of Lunaville, behind the river, is Combat Command Robert. It's the Reserve Combat Command, I believe, of the 4th Armor Division. It has an engineer company, uh, armored, infantry, armored Infantry Company, and a armored battalion, I think, 35th Armored Battalion, um, in that area. And then to the north, which is kind of off screen, but up this road here at the canal is Combat Command A of the 4th Armored. And that has, in this scenario at least, it only has a two companies of the 37th Armored Battalion. So it's going to be coming in from the north, but it's used just as the Combat Command Robert is used and we'll get into what that means later but basically it's going to be hard for the americans to activate those two units uh, this turn and then they are, the americans also have the second cavalry group which is made of armored recon companies and battalions and so 
in the city. They have B Company of the 42nd Armored Recon uh, Battalion, and then they have a light tank company or two light tank companies out here in Moncel. And then in this forest, and then up here, kind of four deployed are a couple more armored recon companies and battalions under screen markers. So they'll kind of be a, a thorn in the side of the Germans who are going to be coming in on these two primary roads, which on those roads actually is going to be the 111th Panzer Brigade. And they'll have some interesting units in this scenario. They'll have these two Panzer Battalions, the 2111th and the 1st Battalion of the 16th Panzer Regiment. And especially the 1st Battalion of the 16th Panzer is a really good unit on its combat side with a range of 3 and an AV of 5. So they'll, those units will be coming in on this road here. And then on this road are the 111th Panzers Infantry and a Stug Company. It's annoying that the Stug Company isn't in support, but it, uh, I think we'll be able to put it to some use. Now off the south map edge, coming in as reinforcement in the first turn in the town of Moyen. So you follow this road down and off the southern map edge, we'll be coming in the 21st Panzer Division. There it is. And it's a good division, but they're pretty fatigued. So they'll have a couple of battalions of infantry and I think one battalion of um, armor, the 21-12th uh, Panzer Battalion. So they'll be coming in from the south and pushing up towards Luneville. And then I'll bring you north to show you kind of what that area looks like. So up here in the north, so here's Combat Command um, A coming in on the canal, and this is the northern limit of this scenario. And then over here we have the 113th Panzer Brigade, and they have a couple of good... Um, they have the 1st Battalion of the 130th Panzer Regiment, and again, a 5 AV f factor with a uh, action rating of three and a range of three. So really good for engagements. The Americans are going to have a hard time countering that in the open. And then the Germans also have the 15th Panzer Grenadier Division, and they're just kind of set up around this forest, preventing a American counterattack against the rear of the Panzer Brigades, I think. It's kind of hard to employ them offensively, at least in the beginning of this game, I find. So what's going to be happening, like I said, the Panzer Brigades are going to be motoring as fast as they can into Luneville before the Americans can concentrate some infantry in the town, because right now they only have hard, real AV units in Luneville, which don't really defend well in urban hexes at all. So the Americans are going to want to activate the Combat Command R and get them into the town and then try to get Combat Command A to kind of get through the town and engage the Germans in the open around the town. And the 2nd Cavalry Group usually is, like I said, a thorn in the side of the Germans because they'll be able to um, attack the combat supply train. Um, or the main supply route of the Panzer Brigades if the Germans don't account for them. So instead of being able to just rush forward in the first turn, the Germans will have to hang back at least a little bit to protect their, uh, to protect their rear and their flank. So that's the setup. Now what we have to do is roll for the weather and kind of get started. The Germans move first based on the scenario rules. So after we roll for the weather, we'll be getting into activating our first formation of the game. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show you the sequence of play that we're going to be following just in case you're new to the system. So we're in the reinforcements part of the pre-turn phase, so we roll for weather and then we're going to roll for air points based on the Allied Air Points chart here on the turn record track. 
And then we don't have any assignments to do in this scenario. We, um, oh, and I should say the reinforcements are to prepare because the 21st Panzer is stacked up off, off board here, ready to come in during the German turn when they get activated. And then the first player determination is the Germans based on the scenario rules. And then we go into the activations. So first we roll one die for the weather and you'll see how it's broken up based on the roll. So a one, that means we're, it's raining. Traffic ability is poor, which comes into play with our snafu rolls. Visibility is two hexes, which is good for the Germans, which means they'll be able to engage from two hexes away. And now we roll for allied air points and basically only on a six do the allies get an extra air point, which acts like an artillery point. And you can see the check mark means Bazooka Charlie would be available on a roll of a six. And Bazooka Charlie, I think there's a picture of him. And Bazooka Charlie is this real kind of badass of a dude who decided he was going to attach some bazookas to his uh, plane, his, uh, his little L4H grasshopper recon plane with bazookas. And then he just went and shot Germans that he found on his own. So that would be pretty badass, let's be honest. But a roll of a two in the rain means there is no allied air points, which is good for the Germans. This is working out perfectly for them so far. So now that we've rolled for weather, rolled for air points, we can skip all the way down to activation and headquarters initialization. So the first player decides who we're going to activate first. So the Germans are going to activate the 111th Panzer Brigade down here kind of coming in from the southeast. And to do that though, we're gonna to have to do a snafu roll. So I'll show this again for the first time, just in case you're new. So when you activate a formation, you have to look on the snafu table and your roll determines what kind of activation you get, whether it's a fail, a partial, or a full. And partial, if you wanna pause it and read what happens, what's different between a partial and a full activation, it's right here. But for the 111th Panzer, they are fresh for fresh fatigue, so they get a plus one, and their MSR is complete and optimal, so they get another plus one. Now, even though it's raining and there's poor traffic ability, their MSR does not use tracks. So it's just a plus two on this die roll. So a five plus two is a seven, and you'll see that's just barely enough for a full activation, which means we get to drop two objective markers and move our full movement allowance for this turn. So I think what we're gonna do is we're going to drop a double objective marker on these two companies of light tanks and Monceau, and we're gonna zoom up the road with the 1st Battalion, oops, the 1st Battalion of the 16th Panzer Regiment, and once they zoom up, since they're at a range of two, they can engage from a range of two, we can safely attack this light tank company without the light tank company being able to attack us back, basically. So we'll move up to here, and with 16 movement factors each, or 16 movement allowance, and primary roads only costing half movement per hex, we can easily get up to here. Um, and I'll do the counting later to see how much um, movement allowance we have left over, but let's get to rolling. Let's get to our engagement. So this represents a armor engagement between two units with real AV factors. That's the AV factors that are in red. So unfortunately the light tanks and so these units with the LT light tank designation are basically like M3 Lees and M5 Stewarts. And yeah, so they're gonna have some trouble against these German units. And the 1st Battalion of the 16th Panzer Regiment, the, these units are meant to be Panthers. So you can imagine Panthers coming up against M3 Lees, how this is gonna go. So let's, let's see though. So the fire gets a double objective zone plus one rate, um, DRM. The target isn't in prepared defense isn't in multiple supports, doesn't have multiple supports and is not a standoff unit. So we have a 
4 plus 3 plus 1 is 8, and uh, 1 plus 3, actually, oops, I'm sorry. We should have this on its uh, combat side, not its movement side, so it doesn't really affect it. So it's still 8 to 5, and then 8 minus 5 is 3, so it's a plus 3 modifier on this engagement roll. And the target is real AV. So we're, we roll a 10, modified 10, and we see that's a target loss and retreat, which means this unit is eliminated since it only has one step. And now the first battalion can continue its move because it is not having one engagement doesn't stop it and finish it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the rest of the brigade and bring you back when I have what's gone on and where everybody ends up. Okay, here we are at the end of the 111th Panzer Brigade's movement. What we've done is we've brought the headquarters and the 2111th, I don't know if that's how we're gonna go say it, but the 2111 Panzer Battalion up to St. Clement, and it's gonna have command radius on all of its units. And so the Panzer Battalion is going to be protecting the headquarters unit so that these pesky armored recon units can't go in and jump the headquarters unit or interrupt the supply train. And then the Pioneer Company joined the 1st Battalion up here in Moncel. And then the two Panzer Grenadier Battalions move forward on their leg side so that they have their three action rating compared to their two action rating on their move side. And of course, they're escorted by the Stug company. So that's the end of the activation for the 111th Panzer Brigade, which means now we have to do fatigue. And here's the fatigue increase table. So we did an engagement, which means on a roll of a one to two, the 111th has an increase in fatigue from fresh to fatigue zero. Being fresh gives us a plus one modifier on our second activation die roll. So we really need that to make sure we get that second activation and get into Lunaville. Ooh, just barely clear it. So a three, more than a one or a two. So the Panzer Brigade stays fresh, but now we gotta do another dice roll still to get that second activation. So this dice roll now needs to be a five or six based on the Panzer Brigade's counter, and since it's still fresh, it gets a plus one on this die roll. So basically a four, five, or six gets a second activation. Oh, just barely, see? Good thing we're still fresh, because otherwise this would not have been good enough for a second activation. So the 111th Panzer Brigade is now used. I put it upside down. Um, I know some people put the little chit on top of it, but... You know, I guess it's all personal preference, just as long as you know that there's no third activation for that unit. So now we go right back to the normal activation chart, and we are going to roll for snafu. So on the snafu table, uh, the formation is still fresh, and the MSR is still optimal, so a plus two. And the poor traffic ability does not affect them because they're on a primary road. So plus two on this snafu die roll, which is plenty, that's a 13. So full activation for the 111th Panzer Brigade. And I think, hmm, do I wanna drop an objective? We might as well because remember on the ISIL or the uh, fatigue chart, the second activation, we're going to have to do a fatigue roll anyway, so we lose nothing by dropping an objective. So I think what we'll do, drop a double objective on B Company of the 42nd Armored Recon Battalion, I believe that is, up here that's in Lunaville, and then we're going to start moving our forces as far forward as we can. We're going to need to remember to protect our MSR and make sure our headquarters are within command range of all of our units. And I think 2nd Cavalry's headquarters is gonna get jumped, so we'll do a roll to see if it's a hard jump or a soft jump. And so I'll, I'll move everybody. Actually, 
I can tell you right now, we're going to be probably putting the 1st Battalion of the 2111th Panzer Grenadier Regiment. We're going to put them in their half track, so now they have truck MA and a action rating of 2. So they're not great at combat when they're in the movement side, but they can get basically on their horse and get into Lunaville. So as they're driving along the road though, they're gonna bump into 2nd Cavalry's headquarters counter. And so what we do is we roll, and on a one to four, it's a soft jump, which means we pull the headquarters counter and the combat train counter off the map, and we pretend like the Basically, the headquarters wasn't there at all. The Germans just thought it was. It was a fog of war kind of thing. And the American player puts both of them back down in legal hexes. And then on a five or a six, however, it's a hard jump. The headquarters unit is actually in that hex, and we have to do some bad stuff for them. So here, here's the die roll. Oh, a six. It's a hard, it's a hard jump. It's not what the Americans wanted. Okay, so since the headquarters unit is jumped, we need to retreat it three hexes. And I mean, we're just going to retreat it again, probably. But one, two, three, I think this makes kind of the most sense. We're not going to retreat it out. But uh, the combat trains get flipped to the ghost side, and the headquarters unit gets a coordination marker. So all those things are gonna make it very difficult for 2nd Cavalry to get a full activation on its turn. However, the 1st Battalion is gonna keep going and they're gonna run into them again, so we need to do another dice roll. I'm just gonna roll it right here, same thing. One to four is a soft jump, five or six is a hard jump. <laughs> it's another hard jump. So we're gonna retreat another three hexes, I guess. One, two, three. Still have ghosted combat trains, still coordinated, not looking good for 2nd Cavalry. So yeah, that's uh, what's going to happen with the 1st Battalion. And now we have to figure out what everybody else is going to be doing. So to take care of this Zoc, what we're going to do is move the 1st Panzer Battalion to this hex here, where we're going to do a engagement between B Company and their M8 Greyhounds and the Panthers of uh, the 1st Battalion of the 16th Panzer Regiment. So we flipped them over to their combat side, as we are allowed to do before we move. And now we look at the engagement table. So we're in a double objective zone, and the target is not in prepared defense, multiple supports. So we're just in the real, the target is real AV for this engagement. And the AV for the German unit is 5 plus the 3 action rating plus the 1 for the double objective zone is a 9 overall. And the combined AV and AR rating of the Americans is a 5. So we're at plus 4 for this roll on 2 die. Where can I put this? Here, I guess. Hopefully that doesn't mess up any of the counters underneath. So that's a seven, eight, nine. So that's just barely enough for the target loss and retreat on the target is relay AV chart. So B company only has one step, so they're eliminated. If you can see, is this gonna focus? No, not really, but they have one step. So that's another unit lost for the second cavalry group. And because the, the result on the engagement table is a retreat, all, heck, all units in the hex retreat. So the second cavalry group's headquarters unit is gonna retreat again. And I think they'll just retreat one, two, three to here. And now their baggage, their combat trains are all messed up, but I think that makes the most sense. I, don't, I think my cat came in here and knocked a few people around. Sorry about that. So now the 1st Battalion can could move into the 
this hex, but we don't want a armor unit, an armor unit to be in a city hex. So we're just going to leave him out here covering across the river uh, this road right here. And now I think we'll move, what we'll do is we'll move on the, on its leg side, we'll move the pioneers into the victory point hex. And we'll also take the second battalion, put them in their trucks or half trucks, whatever they are, and zoom them up the road to the victory point hex as well. And the Stug company, we will just move into the rear of Lunaville covering this road and any kind of counterattack that the second cavalry group may be thinking. And then from the southern road, we're going to move the 221, no, sorry, 2111th <laughs> Panzer Battalion into Moncel. And joining them will be the um, headquarters counter. So, and we moved them on their deployed side. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the combat trains, the ghost, and we're going to move them still within optimal distance, but you probably can't see it. It's on this road. Um, you'll see it next time I zoom out. And that's the 111th Panzer Brigade's turn. So the last thing we have to do is check for isolation and check for fatigue. There's no isolation issues that I can see, but we do have to roll for fatigue. So we did an engagement in this turn and we dropped it a combat objective but the engagement takes precedence so in a roll of a one to two we increase our fatigue i'll just roll it here a four means we don't increase our fatigue and 111th panzer brigade stays fresh so that's the first german activation of turn one now we go to the americans where they're going to activate their first formation the Americans are going to activate Comet Command Robert to get them into Lunaville so that the 21st Panzer can't be activated on the next German turn and come up this road from the south and just keep throwing infantry into the town. And since um, out-of-command units don't affect the blob of a formation, we can, I think, I'm probably wrong, but I think we can operate without becoming mixed with 2nd Cavalry Group, which kind of makes sense. I mean, they're kind of just routed and all over the place. So it makes sense that they don't affect the coordinate or the successful operations of Combat Command Robert. So activating Combat Command Robert, now they're already used, so we only get one activation out of them. And we are going to have to start down here with the second activation. So we're going to rotate them to done. And now we have to roll a four or higher to get a second activation. Combat Commander Roberts on a fatigue of one, so we don't get any bonus for being fresh. So a four or higher, we get that second activation. Oh, just barely with the four. We get the second activation, and now we go into the regular normal activation steps. So for the snafu, they are fatigue level one and no game specific sna uh, snafu, but they're optimal distance for the plus one. So it's a just a straight up die roll for this one. And obviously we want a seven or higher to get that full activation. And we get it with the nine, so Full activation for Combat Command Robert. And now what we're going to do, I think, we'll see, again, you don't come here for strategy or good decision making. You come here to look at the cool counters and the map and to hopefully want to buy the game yourself to prove that you could do this better than me. That's what we want. We want more people playing these games. So what we're going to do is drop the double objective marker on the 1st Battalion of the 16th Panzer Regiment what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to move the 35th Armored Battalion down to this hex here, and we're just going to start a little long-range engagement between these two units. So first, though, let's get the boring snow. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that first. So with our on our uh, combat side, we're just going to move, I think, I don't think it should matter, one, two, 
three, four. This hex is blocked by the town, so we can make it into here, and now that's gonna be an engagement across two hexes. But before we actually do this engagement, since it's not a stopping engagement, because that only applies if we would enter this hex, which I don't think we're gonna do. I think we're gonna stay on this side of the river. It just, you know, it, it just makes more sense to me. So we're gonna first do um, a artillery barrage on the first of the 16th. And we're gonna use one artillery point. So we have one inherent artillery point in Comic Command Robert, and we also have one artillery point assigned. So we're gonna use one of those artillery points for a little barrage first with the 35th Battalion spotting. So it's not really a, a great, you can see we need a, um, a six basically because it's a hard unit. So it's a long shot, but if we do get damage on it, it would be pretty fantastic. So we need a six on this barrage. It's a three, we miss. So now we actually do the engagement. For the engagement, we have a seven AV plus AR rating for the Americans. I think these are supposed to be Shermans. Don't quote me though. Um, and then for the Panthers of the 1st Battalion, we have an AV plus AR of eight. And then because it's a double objective zone, it's plus one for the Americans. So it's an eight to eight. No, it's just a straight up die roll. See who's gonna win this one. As I get bump everybody around. So straight up die roll is a six, which means it's a both loss. So each side loses a step, which is exactly what the Americans like because hopefully you can see, if not, here we go. So the third, fifth battalion has six steps. That's crazy. Um, and so they are more than happy to take a single step loss in exchange for a very hard to replace step loss for the Germans. So the Germans are down to three steps. The Americans are down to five. And I think that's a pretty successful engagement. So uh, since that kind of went so well for the Americans, I think we're just gonna keep on rolling and try another engagement. So it's the same units, same plus zero die modifier, straight up roll because you get two fire events as the uh, activating formation, so, or, each unit gets two fire events. So that was one fire event. And now for the second fire event, we are going to, uh, yeah, again, attack the first battalion. So that was a little bit better with the eight. However, it's still a both loss. So we don't, we didn't get the, we wanted a nine to get the first battalion to retreat, but it is down to two steps now. And we're down to four steps. So overall, that's a good exchange. That's good math for the Americans. And now continuing Combat Command Roberts activation, we're going to move in this armored infantry on their leg movement side into the town of Lunaville. And then we're also going to have the engineering, oops, engineering company join them. To get out my handy dandy tweezers it looks like things are getting a little clumped in there now this isn't as good for the americans because that's only four steps of infantry and if you can see the panzer grenadiers have six steps and i think the pioneers have two steps so the americans are severely outnumbered which makes me think all we're going to do is drop a barrage on lunaville and um, hold out there for now because there's still a chance at the end of the scenario that the 111th Panzer will be forced to retreat. And all we wanna do is give us the option to uh, attack maybe next turn. So again, this isn't great odds because in a city hex, we need a five or a six to inflict a step loss. And we roll one die for each unit, so 
The red die will be the Pioneer and the blue die will be the Panzer Grenadiers. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, well, so much for the die table, but that's Snake Eyes, so uh, nothing, nothing happens with that barrage. So that was our two artillery points used, and now I believe that's gonna be Combat Command Robert's turn. So now we just check to make sure there's no isolation. Everybody's in command range, everything is happy with that. We don't need to move the headquarters unit. So you'll need to move the combat trains. So yeah, we just go to the fatigue table. Again, we did a engagement, so we just need to roll a three or higher, which we do with a six. So combat command Robert remains at a uh, fatigue of one. So I got into editing it and I realized that this is a really long video. It always takes longer to play this than I expect. And so I'm going to cut the first video here and we'll pick it back up turn one in the next video. Thanks for watching. Catch you then.